Now we all know that we can produce timing tracks within Xlights itself. However, there are some times when you want a little bit more power or a little bit more control. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can use Audacity to produce timing tracks. I'd just like to credit Travis uh, for parts of this workflow as well. So with that said, let's uh, get into our Audacity. So we're in Audacity here. And the first thing I'm going to do is click File, Open, and I'm going to open the track that we're going to be working on. And this is going to be Thunderstruck by ACDC. Now what you should do is analyze this track, listen to it a few times, and find out what bits you will want to target with certain effects. You know, is there certain drum beats that you want to be able to, you know, have a certain prop flashing to? Is the lyrics that you want something to respond to? And once you've done that, we can start making several timing tracks. So I'm going to show you some here. So I'm going to click Track, Add New, and say Label Track. So it's Label Track. It's a bit confusing because you think Time Track, but it's actually Label Track in here. And the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to name this one Sections. And what I'm going to use this sections one for is to capture the different elements of the song. So I would listen to it, but even by the waveform here, I know the, that this is the intro of that song where it's just building up to a, to, a, to a crescendo. So the intro starts here to here, and then here we have a build up, and then we have a verse one, verse two, etc. So I'm going to select this bit that's the intro. Of course, you would do it more accurately by zooming in and listening, but I don't want to uh, break copyright, so I'm not going to do that. So I select the arrow and I'm going to press Control B. And what it's done now, it's created a timing track that spans this area, and I'm going to now put in that this is the intro. And then I'm going to do the same way here. I'm going to say Control B. And I'm going to say build up. And then I'm going to carry on along this and actually build all the different sections, verse one, verse two, etc. But let's move on. I'm going to add another timing track or label track, it's called in here. And I'm going to call this one bass drum. And on this one, if we listen to the song, we, we hear a distinct, you can hear that boom, boom. And that's the bit that I'm going to be picking out here. But this is where I want to show you a little extra trick. This waveform is showing everything. It's showing our vocals, bass, drum, etc. So it could be quite difficult to pull out certain things. So although I'm, I, I, you know, I suspect that these are the bass drum, there's lots of vocals mixed in there as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all, and now I'm going to go to Effect Graphic EQ. And now you can specify the frequency range depending on what you want to pull out of that audio. I'm wanting to pull out the bass notes, so I'm just going to pull this element. Some of it is a little bit of experimentation to see what you get, but basically it's bass notes here going up to the more treble notes on this side of the scale. So if I click OK, you can see my audio has been replaced, but you can clearly see now these beats are really standing out. But it's no good me just having this, because if I want to now listen to this, it will sound absolutely dreadful. So that's no good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Import, Audio, and I'm going to reload my track again. And then what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to mute this track. So although I can use this for visual representation, uh, in fact, I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to move the gain down so that it stays blue. So I can use this for my visual representation, but I can use this when I want to listen so I can hear that I truly am hitting the beat. And my workflow now would be, I'd zoom in, and I know these are the drums, but what I would do, I'd quickly play. Yeah, you can hear that's the drum. 
there you go. So it's a case of just going along and saying control B, control B, control B, and I would put the labels in. In this case, I will just call it B rather than base, but it's entirely up to you. Once you've got a few in, you can actually press control C and then, you know, do a cut and paste job and then just align these if they're a little bit out of alignment. But you can see, you can get them right on the money here. See that one's off, so I can pull that one in. and We've got it right on the money, right on that base note. And I've got one I've already produced. So if I pull this one out of the way and uh, pull this one in. So you can see here, I've got my sections, the intro, the build up. Look at the top, the verse one, verse two, etc. Then I've got guitar elements. And if we just quickly play that, you'll hear what I'm doing there. Yeah, so you've got the guitar. I've got when the word thunder is being said. Okay, and thunderstruck as well. So imagine now I've completed, I've done all the timing tracks that I want. The first thing I would do is save the project. In fact, while you're working, save the project several times so you don't lose all of your work. And it will save all of this for you so you can load it all in when you need it again. But now I'm going to get those labels out. So now I go to export, export labels. And I would give this, uh, I'm going to put it to my desktop and I'm going to call it Thunderstruck All. Well, let's jump to our desktop. And you can see I've got Thunderstruck All sitting here. And if I open this, what it does, it exports all of those timing tracks in one. So we need to break them out into individual timing tracks. It's not, an, it's not a problem. All we do is we create a folder. I've already created them to speed up things, but I'll imagine I create a new one and I'll just call this one bass drum. Yeah, I've already got one called bass drum there. So I'm just going to call this bass drum two for the example. And I just open this up. And now I select all of my bass drum labels right click copy paste it in here and save and i would do that for the guitar the thunder element thunderstruck there and the sections and you can see on my desktop if we look here i have already done that so we've got individual timing tracks for all of those elements so let's go to x lights and I'm going to start a new sequence, musical sequence, and I'm going to load my Thunderstruck. Okay, we have our Thunderstruck in, and now let's get those timing tracks in. So it's right click on add new timing here, right, actually right click on new timing, and then say import timing track. Now it must be changed to text file. Then I go to desktop and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my sections. I go like that and then easily now I can see all of the different sections of this song. So it's easily for me to jump about the song and don't and you know I don't get lost in the, while I'm sequencing. Let's move on and let's add import another timing track. Like text. And this time I'm going to import my bass drum. Now you can see all my bass notes, cool. Import another, select text, and I'm going to load in my guitar. There you go, and there's my guitar timings, so a bass drum, guitar. Wrong one. Import timing track, text, and Bass drum, I've done sections. I'm going to bring the thunder in. Okay, and if I zoom in, you'll actually see also that because I captured that name, you can see it's saying the word thunder. So if I wanted some, you know, certain animation to come up when the word thunder is said, you know, I can quickly just, you know, imagine it's fire. I can just drop it, and it will put it right on, straight between those timing tracks. So that's perfect. And yes, I could now carry on and add thunderstruck, but. This really 
makes it perfect for us now. If I go back to this bass drum, because I have all these beats now, imagine I want my spinners here to flash to the beat of the drum. I don't have to start doing individual animations. I can just go here, drop it on my spinners, pull it across. I could do the full timeline if I wished. I might want to make some changes, but what we would do is now change it from waveform to pulse, point to the appropriate timing track. In this case, I'm going to point to the bass drum. And now if I play, there you go, you see it's flashing. Like I say, I don't want to play for too long. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and until next time, see you later.